you can see the case up here is actually scrolling one, two, three, four, five, and then six. And as it goes to six, it automatically resets. All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is a structured text case example. And this will be a case construct, so this will be actually controlling several different lights. And as we do this, uh, we're actually gonna show a ladder logic example of the exact same thing, so you get a side-by-side a -side comparison. We're gonna show you a couple different tricks as far as that goes on how to copy and paste too. So we're starting off with our structured text though. Okay, so this is just a structured text program. I've added the visualization. There's absolutely nothing in the program so right now. So we're gonna head and de declare some of our variables. And this one is going to be an A, and this is going to be a bull. Okay, and we're just gonna come down and, and what you can do is you can, you can copy this, just to kind of give you a base example, and paste. You wanna copy, paste, copy, paste, copy paste so we said five right okay so we're gonna come in and change this to B we're gonna change this one to C and we're gonna change this one to D and this one to E alright so and you notice that as things go uh, we can change the, the size of this as well so let's change the size uh, and get that like a 125 so you can see it a little bit better and kind of alright so now we need to come in and do another bull which is like power on and this will be controlling our system so we'll actually call this a bull as well control that and then what we'll do a flasher timer flasher timer to go down and this will all make sense in just a second but we're going to go ahead and lay our foundation because we've already kind of done a lot of this stuff already so it's a ton this is going to be a timer and we'll say flasher done and this will be a bull and again, you know, as we're going through this, you can follow along and do this yourself as well. So you gotta get the best of what we're doing. Now we're gonna do a counter. Okay, so this will be a counter. And we're just gonna call it counter. No big deal. This is speed. And if you wanna know where to get the counter, again, you can come back and go to uh, input assistance, structure text, come over here to standard, and then come over here to counter and get the counter. All right, so that's the way that looks and you come in here close that and then we're going to get reset okay this is going to be a bool as well so now we have all of our actual variables okay so let's shorten this up so our variable list is right where it's legible and easy to see okay so this would be reset and the reset needs to be closed that's why i had the little bracket there all right so uh what we're going to do is start off with our flasher timer okay so we're gonna come out and add this into our system. We come in and, and add this here if we want to. And now we have our stuff in here. Uh, we need to come in here and actually, just like we do, uh, we need to declare all the, the variables inside of the, the, the actual flasher timer itself. So the input, which will be enabling it, will be the power on. So again, this is will be where we can just pick our input status right here. This will be a power on. So that handles that. And make sure you always, and let's, let's blow this up as well. Kind of gives a better atmosphere. One, okay, so they, it's easier to see. Okay, so just like that. And then we'll have that. Now we're gonna come in here and do the PT, which is the, again, the time. And we're gonna do the time, and the time's gonna be, let's say two seconds. Two seconds. So always remember time um, and then number sign and then the, the whatever you want to do, the variables, seconds or whatever the case may be. So as, as you see, I typed it wrong. And then we'll do uh, flasher done. This is that flasher done right here. We're gonna add that right here. So we'll do flasher done and the flasher done is obviously done when the uh, flasher timer is in queue. Right, so the Q is the done, right? We know that, right? We talked about that several times. So we know the Q is done, so that's there. Now we're gonna write a simple if then statement to control that. So if the flasher is done, if the flasher is done, then power 
actually let's do the uh, this is going to turn our power input on so basically the system will run uh, hands off we're just going to have it cycle all the time so this is kind of like an emulation if you would <clears throat> and then we're going to come in and do our power so we'll say if the flasher is done then turn the power off else if the flasher is not done then we want the power to be on and then we'll just turn that off okay so let's see flasher done and this is a bull so let's make sure we close everything here <clears throat> make sure we have everything there let's see so let's come in here and to our next thing so you have to keep in mind too that sometimes when you're doing this so this is the flasher done we know this okay so this is good I notice you see this little squiggly line I'm gonna make sure that's good power on this generally means like when you have that squiggly line that you don't have something correct right so you don't have something correct inside of your your actual syntax or maybe something of that nature so let's go ahead and look at this and as you know as you're doing this I mean that's just troubleshooting like standard stuff so let's close that let's close this and that's just like that all this should be fine and it looks like it is and the variables are all closed up here so let's actually let's build this so sometimes when you build actually all the time when you build this is a good variation to tell you what's wrong <clears throat> and sometimes that clears up stuff too so there's no errors so it was just a little cache in there so this that's a good once you once you go through the motions and, and figure out oh by the way there's nothing wrong uh, with what I just typed sometimes you just like like I said go up to build hit build make sure there's no errors that simple um, so now that we've got that out of the way and I showed you some basic troubleshooting <laughs> Um, but that ha that happens when you're doing structure tech, so keep that in mind. We're going to do our counter, which we'll just uh, come over here and pick that at our input assistance. And this is just our counter. We're going to put all our variables in for our counter. And this would be a CU, so the count up, right? So, and then we're going to put flasher done. So we're going to have it count every time the flasher's done. Okay. And then that means we're going to enable it then we're going to reset this is where we have our reset this is we're going to do our reset and we'll do a reset right here and that's going to be uh, equal to our reset and so this is where it gets kind of confusing so this is the reset uh, let's just call this a reset command so that you see that and there's a natural reset when it comes to uh, it's a reset that comes with the counter that you need to actually type in so if I if I could let's come back up here and look at this real quick just to kind of give you the solid understanding of this so the counter will have a reset see this and I have a reset that needs to be put in there let me just copy this so you can see it better in the screen so you'll have a natural reset command you need to do as well and that's going to be a bool so let me go ahead and type this so let's, let's go ahead and this will be our reset command so right here we'll do our reset command okay so now we have that now we need to put our PV which is our PV and that's going to be well let's just say five because we're gonna have five and then we're gonna close our list just like that so again the PV is a, is a word it's and it shows you that so we're gonna get rid of this because we don't need it anymore okay so now we're going to do our case of so case and then we're gonna do counter PV and we can get away with this on this on the case of of this one because it is the actual uh, CV and that is a a word so that's completely fine to use for a case of case of and then we'll do if one then we're going to do um, this is where we're going to do our variables and we could just type in a it's not a big deal because we know our variables up there up top 
And then we're going to do that. And then we're going to do. Okay, so then we're going to do B. And this would be a zero or equals zero. Whoop, type wrong. So put that in there. This is a C. Okay, so this is a zero. And we make sure you put your closing statements, so a semicolon after. Because if you don't, then it has a problem just like you just seen. So we'll come in here and do another one. This is the E. This is the final one that we, we have. And then from here on, we're going to actually kind of copy and paste and streamline. Okay, so this is good. Okay, so this is going to be two. All right, so if two. What we're going to do is come in here and copy this and paste. Okay, so this is going to be A. A is going to be uh, zero. Uh, then we're going to do a one here. And then we're going to do a three. Three. And then we'll paste again. And we'll change the one again to a zero. And turn C on. Now, um, as we're doing this, so let's bring this up so you can see it better and possibly get this to a better height so it's easier to see as well. So let's do 140 so you can see that a little bit better. Okay, so let's do four and paste again. And then this one is going to turn on D. Now, I think you can kind of see where we're headed with this. So we're going to do five, and then this is going to turn on, on the last one, which is going to be E. Okay, so this is going to turn on that, and then we're going to do a six, um, and six will be basically our reset button. So six will be turning on our reset push button, or nah, it's not, not a reset push button, the reset command. So we'll basically say six will be an input and we'll say reset command will be a one. All right, so that's, and then we'll say else, 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 uh, reset zero. So we wanna make sure we control that. Cause if you don't, then it'll stay a one. So that's hopefully that clears that up. If you do not tell it to go back to a zero, it will stay a one. All right, so um, up here, we have our, our small issue up here. Well, that's fine. Let's build again. See if it gets rid of the issue. Not a big deal. Again, so that we have zero errors. Okay, so now we have our, our structure text in there. If you can look, you can see all of that. Now, real simple, um, you can see the way it's gonna control. Okay, so if the case of the counter, it's gonna come in and turn A on, um, and if, if, if it's a one, in the in case of it's, it's a two, it's gonna turn B on, if three, it's gonna turn C, if four, turn, it's gonna turn on D, and if five, turn on E. And the N, if it's six, it's going to reset the counter, and then else it's going to reset, uh, it's gonna turn the reset off. Now let's go ahead and do our visualization which is going to be our lamps. We'll come in and put our lamps in here. <clears throat> okay. So we'll shrink this down. Uh, that's a pretty good size. And then what we'll do is change the color to a blue. Oh, well, that was a gray, which is fine. Let's do blue. Okay, so copy this. Copy, want paste five times, two, three, so we have five, come in here and get these, line these up. And what I'll do is just space this one up. And we wanna kinda of get the, the top spacing as good as we can. Cause I'm, I'm basically gonna align them on the side. So we're gonna do the shift button, hold all of them down and then we're going to align to the left, just like that. Now we need to put a variable 
So let's put the variable in here. And this is going to be real simple. A, this one's going to be B. Okay, this one's going to be C. This is going to be C. This is going to be D. And this one's final one is going to be E. And just so you can keep track of it, let's come down here and put a um, let's put a, a text over here, and we'll call this A, and we'll format this so the color is black, and the font is going to be bold, and we'll change the size of it as well. So we'll do bold, and we'll do 14, and this will be A. Okay. So we'll shrink this down because we don't need a big space for the just a simple letter. And we'll get that over there. We'll copy this. Paste, 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 paste. It's that simple. Come over here, put all these. Now the hardest part of this is lining or getting that. And let's blow this up so you can see it better. Sorry about that. I wasn't quite thinking. Uh, about that so let's kind of get this the hardest thing is getting the, the the ability to move the object so that if I could say that correctly and sometimes you got to get the, you have to scroll over and get it above it a certain way before you can actually move it okay so let's get that over alright so real quick we'll hold the shift key and we'll align all these left this is B this is C, this is D, and this is E. All right, so we have all these in here now, and we have our code in here. So let's go ahead and build, and that's compiling our file. So remember, that's how we we check and we double check everything's good. We'll go and turn our simulate uh, simulate on. So we're going to simulate the whole process. As soon as that turns on, we're going to come in and log in which is a download in the, the instance of a code the code sys alright so as soon as this comes on what we're going to do is we're going to debug and then go and test the actual logic so I'm going to pull this over pull the visualization over as well so you can see it better okay so you see all that see the logic let's pull this over here let's pull this and we're going to go to debug, start it, and see the lights turning on. So you can see the lights turning on right here. And let's shrink this down just a little bit so you can kind of see. All right, so A, B, C, D, E. And then it should reset and go back to A, B, C, D. So as you see, the timer is coming in and going in and running for two seconds. And then when it does, it basically comes in and, and the done goes, right? As soon as the timer is done, then it turns on the power. And you can see the power resets the, the actual timer. And every time the timer is done, it counts as well. So that's what's counting for the actual um, the counter. So that's making the case. You can see the case up here is actually scrolling one, two, three, four, five, and then six. And as it goes to six, it automatically resets. So you can see that right here. Let's blow that up just a little bit more. Blow that up just a little bit more so you can see it better. So you can see now, so you can see them each one of these going true and false, true and false, true and false. Remember a bull is a true and false. So that's why we're getting by and, and actually controlling the lights as well as, well as well as we are. Now that's a very, very simple program, right? But let's look at this in a different light too. So we're gonna cheat the system now. We're gonna come in and actually make a ladder logic program and do the same thing. Now again, in this example, the video is gonna get a little bit longer so what I'm going to do is actually do a, a couple co uh, copy and paste. So we're going to stop this. We're going to go offline. And 
we'll turn our visualization back on. Okay, so we have our visualization. We have all this in here. So what we're going to do is to copy this. What I've done is I've actually uh, I have another CodeSys program open right now. This is a ladder logic program, but I need to declare my variables, right? So to keep it simple, we already have our variables done, basically, right? So all we're going to do is copy our variables in here, just like this. Copy, and we're going to go over here and paste. Now we have all of our variables, so we don't have to go in there and add them again. Real simple, right? Have our variable variables. Another thing too on our, um, just so we can lay the foundation, uh, the same thing can be done on the visualization. So this kind of saves you some time if you want to do that. And we can come in here and copy all this. Just hit, just highlight them all. Hit Control C. And come over here to the visualization over on the the other program and hit Control V. Now, um, you see I missed one. Not a big deal. So let's come over here. Let's get that one. Control C. Control V. Place that in there, just like that. Okay, so you see, and they keep the same. This is the. It's important to to do this in a proper manner because, like, first do your variables over here, and then do the the copy and paste on your visualization. So it keeps the same variable in each one of these without having a problem. Now, obviously, it would get rectified as soon as you add, add the variables in, so um, that's not a big deal. So, what we want to do now is go ahead and swap and do our PLC logic for our actual code. Now, we're going to do the same exact thing for the PLC logic. So, what we need to do is a couple different things. All right, so we're going to come into our toolbox. We're going to do a contact on, and this is going to be our basically a power on. So we'll do our power on, and then we're going to do our timer, okay? So we'll come in and do a timer, which is going to be our flasher. Actually, we want to be able to cut the flasher off too. So before we do anything like that, let's come over here, functions, and this is going to be a TON. And we're going to come over here and put this as our flasher timer. and this is going to be our flasher timer queue so this will be our done now I know I'm going kinda quick but this is going to be where we're declaring our time for our timer so two seconds is what we said it was and in our case we're not going to use the we're not going to put an ET in there it's not a big deal but we're going what we are going to do is we're going to put a, a coil on the back side and this is going to come in and we're going to call this our actual done flasher done so we have one ladder in there already we're going to add another network below so insert a rung below this is going to be a counter now <clears throat> in the instance of doing a counter I'll show you how to do that so first you want to have your contact alright then we're going to come in and add a box actually you don't have to add a box you can do a counter We'll just do a standard counter and then we're going to do our counter which is right here that's our variable and this is going to be our power on remember so actually this is flasher done I'm sorry I'm going to do a flasher done this is the because the flasher done makes our counter count and then the reset would be obviously the reset so the reset command and the PV we're just going to type that in and in this instance we're going to call the PV a, a 6 because the way that the ladder logic scans and I'll show you that in just a second so this would be a coil on the back side of here and again we're not going to use the CV we're just going to use the natural CV from the actual um, <clears throat> the natural CV from the actual uh, uh, counter there okay so this one's going to be the reset Okay, so when that's done, it's going to reset the command. So that's how simple that is. And we're going to do another one. Now down here, it's really, really, really simple. Okay, so what we need to do is shorten this up so you can see this better. Now we're going to add a couple different rungs in here. 
And what I like to do first is, is build this out. And what I want to do is, is a mathematical, and I want to come over here and grab a, uh, it's a greater than or equal to, we want to do equal to. Okay, so equal to, so if the power is on, we're going to enable it. And then equal to will be, this is going to be, the first one is going to be counter. So we're going to do the counter CV. And this is going to be equal to 1. Now, the cool thing about here is we can copy and paste. And this saves us some time. So let's go ahead and delete this one. Copy and paste. We're going to do a couple of these. And then we're just going to change this. This is going to be 2. We're going to change this to 2. This is going to be 3. And we're going to do this. I'm sorry, I keep scrolling down. Instead of scrolling down, I'm scrolling the opposite way. So scrolling down would be using this uh, or using the bar over here when we need to. So <clears throat> let's actually paste one more time. And this next one is going to be, actually this is going to be three, this is going to be four. And this one's four. And we'll paste below. And it won't let us paste below. I think that's the problem. Okay, so this is, this is four this is five alright so now we need to add our coils which is over here we're gonna add our coil one two and this is three four and five alright so this is going to be you probably guessed it already going to be a this is going to be B this is going to be C. This is going to be a D. So again, this is exactly how we're controlling the lights over on the other one. Except we're doing it if, basically saying if it's equal to, we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, in the instance of this, we're not necessarily turning the power on. So what we can do, again, when it comes down to turning the power on, is you know we can actually toggle it. Um, you know if that's the case right so actually testing this will actually go through and test it as well so let's go ahead and do that um, now we can also put an initial value in here as well um, so that is another plus right so let's go ahead and or, or we can actually do a switch let's do a switch I think it's better if we do a switch so let's add to make it easier or uh, I guess easier to see so we'll throw in a dip switch over here and we'll put the variable as power on. Let's put the variable as power on. So let's go over here, put that in there. All right, so now that we have this in here, we need to build it. Again, that's compiling, right? So I know we did this kind of quick, but we, we saved a lot of time on copy and paste it. So hopefully that was a, a very uh, interesting way to do things, right? So I want to go over here and so you can see the logic as it runs. Okay, so we're gonna come over here and turn our simulate on. All right, same thing. We're gonna log in, which is the download. And as we're doing that, as soon as it downloads, it does take it a minute to do that, depending upon how big your program is and your variables, or whatever you're testing. So as it comes up, we're gonna go into our now that we're in the, the simulate is live it's in a stop mode we're going to come in here and actually start it now the only thing it's waiting on is for us to turn on the visualization or the the actual um, button or the the toggle we put in so let's shorten this up shorten this up so we can see it i want you to see the logic as it's it's running so we're going to turn our start on and then our lights start turning on the same exact way they did in the structure text program so except you know controlled the same type of logic just a little bit different as far as the way things are done if you notice we can turn on the other one as well so we can come over here still to the other one again so that you are well aware these are two separate programs Right, so that once the structure text version 
and the other one is going to be a ladder logic example. Now the reason I chose to do that is because I want to show you how easy this stuff it can be and show you the examples of one being a ladder logic and one being an actual structured text because it's it's really a, a powerful powerful tool to be able to take the logic and, and understand how things are done in two different meanings right or how things can be more simplified in one and more complex in the other or how they look in one and how they look in the other now again I know this was a longer type of video but again when it comes down to it you see two running projects right side by side same exact thing one has a power on switch and so if I turn the power off it turns the power off immediately so it starts picks back up exactly where it left off because we don't have a reset in there right our reset is automatic right so with all that said um, hopefully you got a lot out of that video and you got to see you know I know we went kind of fast on the ladder logic side of things but when it comes down to it I wanted to show you you know how things were actually structured between structured text and actual ladder logic and how you can use both languages or two different languages generally on just about anything to program the same exact logical control or the logical type right when you start thinking logically you can do a lot more you can do a lot uh, different things in, in different languages to make the same thing accomplished right no matter whatever your task is now things get a little bit different compared to what you're using so th some things are better off in different environments but in that same instance the ability to troubleshoot and ability to logically understand what's going on is the power of all that so hopefully you got a lot out of that and we'll see you guys on the next one